of the piping alignment that is with respect to the gravity that is important if you have a vertical flow then uh, the flow pattern is something like this when you have a horizontal flow the flow pattern is something like this because either case it's a vertical or it's a horizontal if you have a uh, two phase flow the gravity is important you have to uh, switch on the uh, consider the gravity to uh, account the two phase flow okay let's come uh, what are the two phase flow uh, regions in the um, both case of uh, horizontal flow and the vertical flow so today's lecture will mostly uh, focus on the flow in vertical channel let's see okay so the flow regimes in the vertical conduit okay they mainly divided into the what they mainly divided into bubbly flow then the slog flow then churn flow then wispy annular flow and annular flow similarly in the um, uh, horizontal alignment they are mostly into the bubble bubbly flow then they will come the plug flow then they come to the slug flow then they annular uh, sorry uh, astra, wavy flow flow stratified flow and annular flow okay let's come what is the two phase flow in the vertical conduit the first is when you have a gas and a vapor they are sorry uh, liquid and there is a gas they are simultaneously passing through the uh, vertical conduit okay the, the in the direction of the gravity towards ground so what we will find because of the low density the gas molecule uh, molecule will form a small small bubble and they will start moving the uh, upwards direction okay so this kind of flow is normally known as what bubbly flow right so basically uh, on the alignment we can divide the vertical channel flow into uh, five category bubbly flow slog flow churn flow wispy annular flow and annular flow okay so, uh, in this bubbly flow the small air bubbles are dispersed in the dispersed phase what is the dispersed phase so you this their uh, individual identity is very difficult to track if you are computationally tracking these uh, bubbles are so much of uh, small in nature so individually tracking the bubble is very diff difficult so individual identity is not known but as a whole in the bulk fluid they represent the their existence right so what is happening so you can assume them as a homogeneous mixture of liquid and gas in a bubbly flow condition okay so then uh, comes to the uh, two phase flow that is called slog flow what happens in the slog flow when you increase the amount of gas or the gas velocity at the inlet what will happen this bubble start to merge with each other the bubble agglomerated with each other then the agglomerated bubbles they form a bullet cell big vapor particle sorry uh, vapor uh, cell they, they in, in the bullet cell they form it they, they are known as Taylor bubble okay this is a very uh, big cell so almost they are 70 80 percent of the size of the diameter of the uh, pipe they contain it they form a um, very big uh, bullet cell uh, bubbles they are known as Taylor bubble or uh, Apart from the Taylor bubble, there is also some uh, small bubbles are present. They are called the satellite bubbles. So you will find that eventually when the volume fraction uh, transition to bubbly flow to slug flow occurs, when the gas volume fraction between 0.25 to 0.3. Okay. So when you take a particular uh, volume uh, of the um, conduit, then find out how much volume fraction is there. If it is around exceeds 0.25 to 0.3, you will find this kind of slug flow. So what is the slug flow? So this uh, phenomenon is total called slug flow. In the slug flow, there is a Taylor bubble that moves at the center of the pipe. So up, uh, around the Taylor bubble, there is a liquid film. The pop, they stick to the wall of the uh, conduit. Okay, there are some uh, small bubble. They are also called uh, satellite bubble, right? So then this will uh, study details about this uh, Taylor bubble in the next uh, says, uh, subsequent slides. And we will today uh, focus on how to computationally model this log flow using ANSYS fluent, right? So now, uh, next come, if you further increase the gas velocity, and so what will happen? The gas volume fraction will increase. Then what will happen? These Taylor bubbles, they started to merge with each other, okay? So then they form what? They form the churn flow. So what is this churn flow? A wavy interface will form between the uh, fil liquid film region. Here it's quite stable. A wavy interface will form between the liquid film region and the air region. Okay. 
and the teller bubble will merge each other to uh, form a very agitated kind of flow. This is also known as churn flow, right? This is very uh, unstable nature, this web interfaces, and this uh, flow is highly turbulent in uh, condition and oscillating. This is oscillating. Okay. So, next, if you further increase the gas velocity, what will happen? If you further increase the gas velocity, so what will happen? This total, the um, vapor bubble at the center, they're connected with each other, they merge with each other, then they form a through passage for the air flow at the center line, while the activity of the liquid flow, they will be restricted within the vicinity of the solid wall, forming a thin film kind of thing, right? So this kind of flow is known as annular flow, where the gas is moving at the center and the liquid or the thin film, they are sticking with the wall and they are forming just a, uh, their behavior is uh, restricted adjacent to the wall, right? So this annular flow, they, we can also divide into two parts. One is called wispy annular flow. One is annular flow. What is wispy annular flow? This flow regime is characterized by central core gas. Yes, there is central core gas is flowing. So in the liquid film region, the liquid uh, film region, you can find also there are small, 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 small air bubble or the vapor bubble are present. So this is called wispy annular flow. If you further increase the flow velocity, these air bubbles, they are trapped inside the liquid films over here the, near the vicinity of the wall. They will finally disappear and the flow is completely annular flow where the gas particle is going at the center line. They will track, uh, are track, uh, taking some water droplets with them. Apart from that, the water in a continuum approach, they are flowing as a thin film adjacent to the with solid walls, right? This is called annular flow. Now let's come pictorial representation, how we move, how it started and how it is moving. We started with a gas velocity, which is very less. Then finally, we uh, increase the gas velocity. Initially, when you provide the two-phase flow, provide both liquid and gas, the gas started as a dispersed, as a small, small uh, uh, nucleus inside the liquid column. Then this is called bubbly flow in terms of the bubble. So then finally, if you increase the gas velocity, what will happen? These bubbles, they agglomerate with each other, forming a big size of bubble. That is called the Taylor bubble. This uh, represents a bullet shaped bubble. And gradually the bullet shaped bubble, they moves upward. And there are so also some small scale bubble that is called satellite bubble. This kind of flow is known as slug flow. Then finally, if we further increase the velocity, this slug started with merging with each other, forming a very unstable agitated uh, structure. Okay, that is known as churn flow. If you further increase the uh, velocity, then this churn uh, bubbles at the center line, they merge with each other and providing a thorough passage for the air flow at the center line. And this is called annular flow, right? You can follow this textbook by Gajar Singh to uh, find out uh, more about theoretically, more about the uh, uh, two-phase flow in a conduit, okay? So now let's come to the uh, classification of the regime, okay? This uh, problem is well studied in the literature. It's not very uh, um, uh, new uh, phenomena. So that's why by the experiment, by the thumb rule, it is well classified for what velocity of the water and what velocity of the air, the regime will be started from separating with each other. Means it is transition will happen from the, transition will happen from the bubbly flow to the slug flow, slug flow to the churn flow. Uh, this will uh, uh, will be depends upon the velocity. So here I like to inform the velocity can be categorized. So you have a uh, as a whole total the mixture. Here we have a mixture of the vapor and as well as the liquid. So uh, the what we do we have a mixture velocity, right? So apart from the mixture velocity, we have a velocity of the fluid, which is also no uh, sorry velocity of the liquid that is known as superficial velocity of the liquid. We have a velocity of the vapor that is known as superficial velocity of the vapor. Okay. So now coming. So for what superficial velocity of the liquid and what superficial velocity of the vapor, the flow region is classified. Okay. If you come here, the uh, x-axis is showing the superficial velocity of the gas in meter per second. Then the y-axis is showing superficial velocity of the liquid 
meter per second we can see the uh, how at what velocity superficial velocity of the gas and what superficial velocity of the liquid this uh, flow regimes are formed suppose for the bubbly flow it is in the dispersed uh, dispersed state we can find the high uh, superficial velocity of the liquid and very low superficial velocity of the gas the results in the dispersed flow similarly for the annular flow we find that low superficial velocity of the liquid and high superficial velocity of the gas the results in the annular flow this is this map okay this map was for the water and air uh, arrangement but what happens if there is other kind of fluid if there is a refrigerant there is some other kind of fluids we have just taken consideration of velocity we have not taken consideration other property to classify that one Herit and Robert in 1969 they give a picture pictorial representation not only considering the velocity they consider the rho times that is the density of the liquid times the velocity square right this is the velocity square of the liquid in the uh, x axis and velocity square of the gas in the y axis right so this uh, graph is somehow universal and applicable to most of the fluid okay so in this fluid we can see for what uh, velocity of the uh, and the superficial velocity of the liquid and what superficial velocity of the uh, gas uh, at corresponding density results the corresponding flow regimes what results in the bubbly flow what results in the annular flow what results in the wispy annular flow what uh, results in the slope flow okay this is some theoretical prospect now we have a brief idea whenever there is a two flow happen uh, two phase flow happens in the in the vertical conductor pipe what happens and what kind of flow regimes now coming to the uh, main topic today the multi phase uh, slope flow simulation we have to focus more on this slope flow region gradually we will move to the other region so what is this slope flow region what is this taylor bubble we need to identify this right now let's come classification of the slope flow the slope flow is uh, present both in case of the vertical pipe flow horizontal pipe flow as well as the inclined pipe flow right in case of the vertical pipe they are distinguished in a bullet shaped bubble at the central line in case of the horizontal pipe definitely because of the gravity the dense liquid they fall on the bottom side while the lighter tele bubble they are on the top side right they are moving in a bullet shape when you have a inclined shape of the uh, pipe they have some different arrangement right let's now understand this tele bubble this is very important uh, for many uh, application just like boiling condensation in thermal power plant nuclear reactor cooling then the micro fluidics and capillary flow then the production of the hydrogen now, right now they are uh, from the hydrocarbon that is now it's a uh, very uh, important research for the electronic uh, vehicles uh, uh, perspective so now this is the tele bubble for three different fluid this is for the water they form uh, tele bubble there are some satellite bubble there is some glycerin there is some silicon oil so it named after the british uh, fluid dynamist sir uh, jeffrey ingham tele so uh, this is the uh, thesis advisor to gk bachelor that book we have studied is a very famous uh, british uh, uh, to fluid dynamics after him a lot of things in the fluid dynamics is named so what's so understand the teller bubble teller bubble as a bullet shape it has a nose it has a cylindrical body having a size greater than the diameter uh, almost of the diameter of the type hmm. so size means this is the size uh, in the longitudinal direction so if that this tele bubble has a size greater than the diameter of the pipe in the longitudinal direction so now understand more uh, on the tele bubble so the tele bubble as you tell it's a bullet shaped thing so tele bubble has different parts the topmost thing is called as nose part of the tele bubble right so this is called the nose part of the tele bubble so when the tele bubble moves it is a packet of the uh, gas particle it moves so around the tele bubble there is a liquid film for the adjacent to the wall right this tele bubble has a tail also if you look at the experiment this has a tail in the tele bubble in, uh, beside the tail there is a wet region they form in the tele bubble okay so the 
body section, the body section of the telebabu, they can be divided into two sex sections. One is developing film section. There is a uh, thing, if you look at the, uh, the picture, uh, picture, this pictorial representation taken from this uh, journal, okay. Uh, you can see there are two regions. One is a fully developed flow region inside the telebabu. There is a developing uh, film of, uh, there, there is a fully developed constant thickness film region, right? And there is a developing film region in the uh, telebubble. There are two kind of region in the telebubble. Now, there are a uh, lot of questions come into mind. What is the separation distance? Suppose you have a vertical, very big vertical pipe. What is the two distance between the teller bubble? Okay. If the separation distance between the teller bubble is small enough, the motion and shape of the telling, telling bubble get largely affected by the flow of the wake region. So if the teller bubbles are getting so frequently in a pipe, there is not any uh, large separation distance, then what will happen? Okay. The motion and shape of the tellering bubbles get largely affected by the flow of the wet and leading to one nose become distorted and wavy. So this always it's not possible that you will get a very uh, smooth curvature kind of teller bubble as shown in the picture. Sometimes you see a very wavy kind of teller bubble that we will uh, see uh, later in the uh, in our CFD region uh, simulation. Okay that the nose shape of the teller bubble, they're largely affected by the wake region. They form at the, uh, uh, behind the tail of the teller bubble. If the teller bubble are, uh, separation distance are very less, then the shape of the nose, they're affected by the nose, uh, wake region of the teller bubble and the nose shape get wavy structure, right? So coalescence between the teller bubble can result increasing the gas flow rate. Already we have seen it. It's lead to a semi-annular or the annular wispy annular flow, right? As a consequence of further increase in gas flow, the destruction of the liquid slug. Already we have uh, discussed about these things. How the teller, the slug flow become to churn flow, churn flow to uh, wispy annular and annular, wispy annular to annular flow, increasing gas velocity. Now let's come in the complexity. What? are the complexity that are associated for this uh, slug flow, right? The slug flow is a very complex flow. It is because it is a highly inherently unsteady in nature, right? So even though the liquid gas flow rate remains steady, the component means the mixture, the arc, uh, phase velocity, pressure, etc. they are transient. They vary with respect to time. Moreover, they are intermittent in nature means there is a transition from the uh, one regime to other regime. You can see there is an intermittent in nature. Slug flow may cause problems for the control and separation equipment. So suppose you have a process industry just like home fed, you are pasteurized the milk, where your milk along with some gas is flowing. It's very difficult for the separation equipment to handle this kind of uh, multiphase flow where the slug flow is happening, right? So, uh, let's come, okay, then uh, classification, we can already did it, hydrodynamic slug, terrain, terrain slug, operational induced slug, there are from the best up on the process uh, equipment or the process uh, plant, there are different kind of slug, we can classify it. Now this is some experiment uh, provided to me to do the slug flow CFD simulation, this is from the experimental setup, just uh, two years back, I did it for some of my colleagues. So this is some experimental uh, visualization of the slug flow. They did it in their laboratory. So I have the CFD result, corresponding CFD result. I will uh, show it at the end once I uh, cover how to do the CFD setup. Okay. So this is some experimental input where we find our uh, water velocity. The, we are providing the water from the bottom. The water is moving up. We have a pump that pumps the water from the bottom towards the top. So at the velocity of 0.31 meter per second, we have a another pump they are, that are pumping air through the pipe that is uh, 0.32 meter per second. This is the total uh, uh, experimental uh, setting. Okay. So this is some of the pictorial representation. So now come to the more interesting part. I know everyone is uh, interested for some uh, application for, uh, regarding the numerics, regarding the two-phase flow because theory is uh, is essential to understand the two-phase flow and it's more uh, 
uh, fascinating to do some uh, numerical things. Okay, so this is a multi-phase flow using ANSYS spread. Okay, so this is some of my recent paper on multi-phase flow, and this is not exactly a straight pipe. Rather than it's a very thin uh, narrow coil, 1.2 diameter narrow coil. It's used as an expander in the uh, expander device in a HVAC system or the refrigerator. This is a capillary tube where we have uh, did the pitch chain modeling. High pressure liquid refrigerant is coming and how they are passing from the high pressure around 12 bar to 2 bar and uh, entitling a uh, pitch chain process. So then what are the approaches to the multi-phase modeling? Before moving to the ANSYS and uh, Fluent and doing the multi-phase setup, let's have some thorough knowledge on the numerics of this multi-phase, right? So by this time, you are now sure that what is multi-phase flow? Now comes small uh, description about the approaches for the multi-phase modeling. What are the options for multi-phase modeling that are available in the commercial software like ANSYS Fluent, right? What is the difference for, uh, between them? What is the use of them? And uh, for which kind of multi-phase flow? which numeric model we should use it because and fluent provided a lot of different kind of uh, multi-phase flow modules to you for use so it's up to you to wisely decide which model is perfectly applicable for your condition right so we have an oiler oiler approach almost we know that oiler oiler approach means in a fixed grid system we are analyzing the flow. We are not moving with the flow in a Lagrangian approach to tracking rather than we are taking a fixed control volume in the space and analyzing in the flow. So this kind of approach is known as the Euler-Euler approach. So in the Euler-Euler approach, different phases are treated mathematically at interpenetrating continua. I will explain what is interpenetrating continua when we are, I will come to the mixture model, right? So there are basically three kind of uh, multi-phase model that are available on the uh, ANSYS Fluent or any other commercial software for the oiler oiler multi-phase flow. One is called volume of fluid or VOP model. Second is the mixture model. Third is the Eulerian model, right? What is volume of fluid model? In the volume of fluid model, the surface uh, tra tracking technique is applied to the fixed Eulerian mesh. Okay, it is designated for the two or more immiscible fluid. If what will happen? If you have a miscible fluid, just like uh, if you add uh, uh, kerosene and water, they are immiscible. You will find an interface form between the kerosene and water. So these are immiscible fluids. So for this kind of fluid flow simulation, where the, there is a two immiscible fluid, fluid and there is a distinguished interface is forming, for this kind of fluid simulation, this VOP or the volume of fluid model is applicable. In the VOP model, the single set of momentum equation. What's the difference between the Euler equation or Euler model and the VOP model? In the VOP model, we have a single set of momentum equation, single set of the energy equation throughout the domain. We are not solving different equation for different phases that we need to understand uh, firstly. This VOP model is computationally more inexpensive compared to the Euler model because here we have solving a single set of momentum equation for both the phases or if you have more than one or two phases for all phases you are solving a single set of momentum, single set of energy and single set of any other governing equation, right? So where is applicable? As I told it is applicable to free surface flow, uh, sloshing, large bubble and large liquid breakup so we'll uh, sorry uh, liquid after the breakup after the dam will uh, jet breakup we'll show this example i will show some uh, animation that i did in uh, my past work to show you uh, where the VOP is applicable where the uh, other models are applicable okay so now coming to the um, uh, governing equation what are the governing equation that is applicable for the VOP model. Okay. The first equation is the color equation. What is that? So to let understand. So this alpha Q is nothing but the alpha is the volume fraction, right? So what is volume fraction? Suppose you take a particular volume in the space in the or control volume in the flow uh, fluid domain. 
in that control volume we have two phases you might be two phases you might be gas you might be liquid right so this volume fraction is defined as how much fraction of the particular phase is occupied divided by the total volume of the control of the control volume right so by this method it is divided described so sum of all volume fraction is going to be one right where alpha represents the volume fraction of the individual phases then once you find out the volume fraction then what is the target then find out the property you know the property of the gas you know the property of the liquid how to know the property of the mixture or the, how to know the property of the fluid that present in the particular control volume then you have to do that weight factor uh, summation with respect to the way the weight factor is here the volume fraction at a particular control volume the amount of volume fraction of the particular phase times the density it will give you uh, and if you do the summation over all the phases you will get the corresponding density the first equation here they present the corresponding continuity equation for the respective phases okay this is very similar to your mass continuity equation for the overall mixture right but here what will happen if you have a phase change process means your liquid after getting gaining some energy the latent heat is converted absorbed and it is changing its phase in that case if there is some phase change process or the latent is involved then one phase is changing to other phase this this uh, this particular term they represent the mass flow the mass transfer they are associated because of the with the phase change process of the multi phase flow right this is if you have any mass to mass flow source term otherwise if you neglect the phase change process or any additional mass source this will represent your volume fraction or the color equation right so then as i told you need a single uh, phase sorry single set of governing equation this is the single governing equation for this bob model right in this governing equation the density the property like viscosity they are already weight weight average over the control volume then here the weight is the volume fraction already you have defined and what is the additional force this f f is the surface tension force so what we need to understand when you discussed about the uh, hop model we uh, already told this this is applicable for a multi phase flow where there is a distinguished interface is formed to two liquid so physically what leads to this uh, interface formation it's the surface tension right if there is no surface tension then the fluid may be uh, miscible there will be uh, they why there will be any separation there will be perfectly miscible the surface tension force they prevents from mixing of two fluids and for the sharp interface right so this surface tension force already we know this is a line force right so this governing equation or navier's equation this is a volumetric force term so then we have there is a appropriate me uh, measure to convert the li uh, line force like surface tension force to a, a volumetric force and provide it as a source term that accounts the surface tension effect there is a, a method called brackel and all it's a 1960s or 70s paper i don't remember exactly so this is the method in which the line force like surface tension force is converted into equivalent volumetric force and passed as a source term to the navier stokes equation otherwise just like a single phase equation the governing equation remain as usual now coming to the energy equation if you are solving the energy change process so this is my t this is my e e is nothing but enthalpy for incompressible flow what is enthalpy rho cp into t right so how to rho already you have calculated from here uh, waiting a uh, average of the wave volume fraction then how to calculate this enthalpy there is a method to calculate the enthalpy they both weight average according to the density and the volume fraction once you do the weight average in the left side you will calculate the enthalpy of the flow system so the pressure they remains constant for both okay uh, <clears throat> now come what is the uh, volume fraction uh, hop model is doing and where is the complexity just like single phase flow you can solve this all governing form of equation and get a volume fraction right so what will happen in the bhop model normally in the flow domain they discretize into the uh, 
after discretize into the control volume suppose the fluid is present this is my fluid one this is my fluid two each volume fraction is neglected as a number okay suppose you have a liquid the liquid you have number as a primary phase and assign it a number one you have a secondary phase which is called gas you have assigned it to zero right so in this cell what is the volume fraction this cell is completely filled by liquid its volume fraction is one this cell is complete filled by gas its volume fraction is zero right what is the volume fraction here are the, the the cell which represent the interface are the cell which represent the interface the volume fraction is any uh, fractional number between zero and one so that depends how much fraction of the liquid present in the cell so this is suppose you are doing a fluid flow experiment this is suppose your actual interface they, they, they looks like when you do the numerics you solve the set of governing equation you find the volume fraction then what will happen so the first the first rough estimate you find at particular cell okay if volume fraction is of 60 percent what of the liquid then what you will find in just in a rough approach 60 percent of that volume you will feel it just like this then remaining 20 percent you allow to air to be present so in that case what will happen a zigzag zigzag kind of interface will form which is very different maybe computational it is okay this kind of interface maybe computationally makes sense okay because we solve Navier-Stokes equation we get the volume fraction what's prohibit from us from filling 60 percent volume fraction of the cell whether there is any restriction if the volume fraction is 60 percent like this or 60 percent like this or 60 percent like this right so then once we fill it we will get a zigzag zigzag kind of thing the major challenge in the VOP method is the interface reconstruction means how to once you get the volume after solving the volume fraction equation once you get the volume fraction at the interface how to make this zigzag interface a smooth interface that represent the reality there are a lot of uh, options are uh, available in for interface reconstruction you can go through a theory uh, ANSYS fluent theory or any interfacial uh, flow phenomena uh, books or journal to find it okay what happened actually the interface the, uh, around the interface there is a pressure jump happen okay uh, because the across the interface there is a stress continuity there is a flux continuity energy flux continuity there is a velocity continuity every mass continuity everything is maintained right so there is a stress or jump or the pressure jump happen across the interface that depends upon the radius of curvature of the interface okay mathematically you already know what how to calculate the radius of curvature that depends upon the radius of curvature of the interface uh, of both the phases that depends upon the surface tension coefficient okay so accordingly from this cell to the other cell there is a sudden jump in the pressure or the pressure jump across the interface this is the brief description of the VOP model. So let's come the mixture model. So what is the mixture model? Till now we have uh, studied how to uh, do the uh, modeling of the fluid flow that is having a distinguished interface. Just let's come to another multiphase flow model. This is called the mixture model. Earlier I just discussed the word interpenetration of the continuum, right? So now I'll explain what is interpenetration of the continuum and how this mixture model is uh, different from a uh, VOP model and where it is applicable. Now, just let's come hmm, to this kind of simulation. Okay, so this is a multiphase simulation, right? So for this reason, I can find a distinguished interface between the uh, uh, water and air. So here I will go for a Bob simulation but now come to this uh, uh, kind of flow where there is a bubbly flow the individual air droplet don't have the their identity but as a whole they represent as a homogeneous mixture of the air and water so if i employ the bob method for this kind of computation what will happen it will inherently increase the computational complexity it means how much small grid I just need to prepare to capture this small small uh, interface across this uh, tiny uh, bubbles right so in order to compute this kind of 
phenomena, the bubbly flow kind of phenomena or the evaporation uh, of process when there is a high pressure liquid or is changing its phase, right, to this phenomena, the mixture flow model is developed. This mixture flow model is identical to Bhopp model, but what it, uh, uh, how it is different from the Bhopp model, that is called interpenetration of the continuum. What is that? In the volume of fluid model, okay, the rest region, okay, the volume fraction is either zero or one, except at the interface. Here it is volume fraction is zero, here the volume fraction is one, except at the interface region, the rest everywhere the volume fraction is zero one one. For the mixture model, the situation is different. Everywhere in the flow domain, the volume fraction is allowed to be any number, uh, fractional number between zero and one. Means theoretically what it is telling, any cell is capable of forming a subgrid scale some volume and subgrid scale, sorry, so subgrid scale volume of some liquid and some uh, gas, right? So this is uh, the mixture model is doing and how it is doing. The formulation is very identical to Bob model. So you have the volume fraction, summation of the volume fraction equal to one. You have the, to calculate the property like density and viscosity, you have the weighted summation of the corresponding property with respect to the volume fraction to get their density and the, get their viscosity. Now let's look at the governing equation, the mixture model governing equation. So now we already understand where the mixture model is applicable. It is applicable for the bubbly flow, sedimentation, drop, kind of flow, right? In an euler euler framework. Now let's find out the governing equation, right? In the mixture model, unlike the volume of fluid model, we have here the homogeneous uh, um, flow, um, uh, mixture of the air and the liquid, right? So the individual phase has some velocity already, I have told you, those velocities are called superficial velocity in a mixture, the gas has a, bubble has a, identic, uh, has a unique velocity, that is called superficial velocity of the gas. The liquid um, uh, has a unique velocity, the water has a unique velocity, that's called superficial velocity of the liquid. But the velocity of the mixture is very different from the superficial velocity of the liquid of the bubble. So now in the mixture model, what will do it, we have considered the velocity of the mixture, not the superficial velocity of the individual phase to simulation. So just like earlier Bhopp case, here we will do the weighted average sum with respect to the volume fraction at each cell to determine the property, right? Then we will solve the Navier-Stokes equation for here for the mixture velocity, not the superficial velocity. So once we do it, Vm stands for the mixture velocity, how it the mixture velocity is defined, this is weighted sum, okay, with respect to the volume fraction and density of individual phase velocity. This Vk stands for my superficial velocity. So Vk equal to 1, suppose I put it, it stands for the superficial velocity of the liquid. K equal to 0 if I put, if my gas is a primary phase, it will stand, sorry, K equal to 2 if I put, it uh, uh, gives the velocity of the gas, right? So then if we do the weighted summation, of the individual superficial velocity with respect to the density and the volume fraction and finally we divided that with the mixture density then we get a velocity that is nothing but our mixture velocity for that mixture velocity while we are solving the Navier-Stokes equation the it is very similar to that our continuous phase Navier-Stokes equation right but what is the additional term they are coming in the uh, Bob uh, equation the Bob equation there is a some interface was coming between the two phases. That's why the in the interface, we have the surface tension force and we accounted that surface tension force in terms of the volumetric force by Brackel's etc. method, right? But while we're coming to the mixture model, the sharp interface is not there. They're all in a tiny bubble set. They're in a dispersed phase. You, are, you don't have any sharp interface, even if there is a, interface is visible computational capturing this sharp interface is computer I means very expensive it's computational very very expensive right what will happen so there may be superficial velocity right so this a new type of flow 
So a new type of uh, uh, term we will get in the governing equation that is the divergence of the relative velocity between two phases. Relative velocity means superficial velocity. Okay. So this term we will uh, see it next. What this term is called? This is called drift velocity. Okay. Then the divergence of the the uh, square of the drift velocity multiplied by the their respective uh, density and uh, volume fraction this divergence of this term will come into the picture this is called the drift flux model okay so how this drift velocity is uh, uh, defined the drift velocity is nothing but the relative velocity between the two phases relative velocity of uh, phase one with respect to the phase two right so now if okay so this uh, uh, sorry this is drift velocity this is the relative velocity okay so now this is two phases p and q the relative velocity simply the velocity of the phase p minus velocity of the phase q this gives the relative velocity then there is a mass fraction of any phase okay then we know the density so then density multiplied by the corresponding at a particular control volume the density multiplied by corresponding volume fraction divided by the mixture density they will give the mass fraction means if in the control volume there is a particular volume of the fluid uh, present corresponding to the phase one right what is the mass of that phase physically this mass fraction is representing that thing right once the mass fraction is calculated then this drift velocity is calculated this relative velocity okay if you have more than two two phase flow then this drift velocity is the difference between the uh, relative velocity minus summation of the mass fraction with respect to the relative velocity of the other phases, right? So then once this is known, this v DRP is drift, uh, velocity is known. Once this drift velocity is known, you can plug this term in the Navier-Stokes equation and solve. Then you know the mixture velocity. What is challenging over here to compute the drift velocity? To compute the drift velocity, we need the superficial velocity of the individual phases. But what we told, we are not calculating actually the superficial velocity of the individual phase. We are calculating what? We are calculating the mixture velocity. But here, while you are plucking the term, okay, for the drift velocity is somehow asking the information about the superficial velocity. Then you must have some mechanism that give you the information about their superficial velocity from the mixture velocity, right? To compute that, the, there are some numerical correlations are followed where the relative velocity, okay, just velocity of, uh, of phase P minus velocity of phase Q, they reduce to this form, okay, T, TP, okay, this is some uh, time scale factor, uh, factor, okay, by F drag, this is some uh, coefficient of the drag, this is the density difference between the uh, phase one and the mixture phase, okay, this is the density of the phase uh, on uh, of p this, this is some acceleration term right this dp is nothing but again this uh, tau p is represented by some numerical correlation over here so 18 mu q this is, is the mu is the viscosity q is the uh, corresponding to the phase q this is the diameter of the suppose you are, uh, you know this is a dispersed phase some particles are forming so what is the average diameter of the particle that dp is represent the average diameter of the bubble okay so this all things are known so numerically you plot it then calculate tau p to calculate a drag just we have some numerical correlation based upon the particle Reynolds number we'll calculate in what is the drag force on the uh, particle right and this acceleration term based upon the mixture velocity then we can calculate the acceleration term so as a whole what will happen we are not actually computing the superficial velocity but using somehow the empirical correlation from the mixture velocity, we calculate the superficial uh, effect of superficial velocity and take their divergence. This is the peculiarity of the mixture model, right? So then coming to the Eulerian model. What is Eulerian model? This model solves governing uh, equation for each phase individually. Means it is computationally expensive. So let's come into a paint box and I'm showing it. Okay, what happens normally in the Eulerian model? Okay. Okay. 
so suppose this is a domain okay have some interface ah no front so which is a slime okay let's do I have some interface like this is for me. Okay. So this is my fluid one. This is my fluid two. Okay. So if I want to solve it in the all and model, what will you do? I'll solve a separate set of governing equation for phase one. I'll solve a separate set of governing equation for phase two. Then what will do? I have to then apply some boundary condition at the interface. Earlier, we avoided this condition. We don't have any explicit boundary condition at the interface. We applied boundary condition at the physical boundary. Now in the Eulerian model, we have to apply some boundary condition at the interface. We have to solve separate set of equation for individual phase. And this boundary condition, what kind of boundary condition? There are some physical rational thing, just like across this boundary, mass flow rate should be continuous. Whatever the mass is coming from one phase, this should be go to the other phase. This is one condition. There are stress continuity should there. There should not be stress, should not be discontinuous across the boundary. Otherwise, the interface will break. The amount of energy they are coming, they are going out, and there is a temperature continuity at the interface. There is a unique temperature. So, based upon this kind of physical rationality, the boundary condition is provided. Okay. And two governing set of equations is solved for each individual phases in this Euler kind of simulation. So this is that's why I have not uh, explicitly put all the governing equation for the Euler model. Model. So this model has also some uh, application. Okay, there are in the Eulerian model there are two parts also coming in the Eulerian model. One is fluid fluid uh, flow, non granular flow that I have already shown you in the uh, paint box. But if you have a fluid one, if you have a fluid two, you have a distinguished interface. You, instead of Bob method, you can solve it in the Euler Euler method. That is fluid fluid Eulerian flow. There are also some uh, granular flow. Suppose you have a part, uh, granules particle, you have a three phase flow. Okay, just like you have a fluidized bed reactor kind of thing. Then there is a granular flow is, uh, comes into the picture. There you have a solid particle, you have a fluid, then the solid fluid flow happen. Then the granular flow theory, just like kinetic theory, uh, etc. They will come into picture for this Eulerian uh, uh, flow application. Okay. I'll show you some fascinating uh, pictures and all, okay, where we did it. So before moving further, I'll uh, show you some fascinating application. This is some workbench machine, etc. I did it earlier. Okay. Now see. Okay, this is some multi phase application. It takes some time. Okay, so uh, years back I was working in a corporate so, uh, for RD. So it's a uh, largest home appliance manufacturer of the world. So the task was if accidentally water falls on your washing machine or the dryer or any of your home appliance, make sure it is not going inside and destroying the electronics component. For this kind of simulation, I use the VOF model. You can see it. We spill some water uh, from the bucket. It is falling on the uh, top of the devices. And we are measuring if and quantifying the amount of water they are going inside and reaching near the electronic component. For this kind of thing, what we did? We did the POP model simulation. Here we have a distinguished interface between the air phase and the liquid phase. Rest area is air the liquid is coming they are hitting the uh, surface and they are going the, for this kind of flow the pop model is suits well right this is a cartridge right we did the simulation this cartridge is nothing but where you put the detergent and water is coming from the nozzle they are uh, mixing with the detergent and flushing it to a washing chamber so here there is a earlier air is there the water is coming okay 
then they are mixing with the uh, detergent properly and they are flushing. So before in the mixing chamber simulation, we did it, the two phase simulation to calculate the performance of the uh, system or the nozzle. So through this VOP model, right? Here there is a condensate flow model that also we did in the VOP model. So suppose you have a uh, washing machine uh, or dryer. So when you uh, drying the clothes in the dryer, so through evaporate evaporation, the water vapor are removed from the uh, cloth. So what will happen? They will the water vapor will go to the, towards the top. They will condensate on the surface of the lid. Then finally, in the uh, gravity action, when the film thickness will more than a prescribed value, they will be fall into the uh, uh, clothes, right? So this kind of uh, thing is uh, known as condensate, uh, lead condensate flow. The VOP model also we use that one. Now coming to the second application that I show the accepted paper. So this is a, a kind of thing that we did evaporation cooling. This is a very tiny uh, helical capillary tube around one mm diameter. The high pressure uh, refrigerant is liquid refrigerant is coming. They are just changing the phases. This phenomena is called flashing. During the changing the phases, this is a mixture. At the end, we get some mixture around quality uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 kind of thing. The secondary phase, that is the vapor phase, they remains uh, in a dispersed condition. Very small, tiny shape air particles are present in the mixture. So in that case, the VOP method is very, very computationally expensive to do the simulation. So that's why what we did, we applied the mixture model over here for the simulation. We don't need very sharp interface computation between the two phase, rather than we just need the bulk scale, uh, scale uh, computation where the mixture velocity is of utmost importance to us, right? So on what is the amount of um, phase interaction or the mass change, uh, ma mass transfer because of the latent heat interaction, that is important to us. That's why you use the evaporate cooling. So this is what I told the experimental data we got for the slot flow. Yeah. What I told you. So for that, I just did the slot flow modeling. Here you can see the teller bubble, how they are gradually moving to the churn flow. The slot flow is moving in the churn flow. As I told, the teller bubble has some uh, characterization just like uh, the nose, tail, etc. how they are moving to the wispy annular flow. Everything is simulated. You can see small shape of a teller bubble here. This is a kind of uh, uh, slot flow simulation where the separation distance, etc. everything we monitor. Okay. Now this application is the euler euler flow. Here it's the granular flow. We have a solid detergent. Let the animation starts. These are the solid detergent. The liquid is coming. Okay. They are heating the solid detergent and flushing it from the chamber mixing. So while you have a granular material like uh, uh, solid detergent, so for this kind of simulation, we are using the Euler model. So now it's clear. So earlier we have used VOP model somewhere, mixture model somewhere, Euler model somewhere based upon the applicability. So you have to choose which model to use for which application. All models are not applicable to all problem, right? So apart from this, there is some Euler Lagrange flow also there. This is called a DPM particulate matter flow. I am not covering those aspects. It's also a separate and broad topic that also we have that uh, did it in the past capability. We did it in the past. This uh, droplet, the continuous, one is continuous phase and one is the Lagrangian particle tracking droplet kind of thing. Now, this is all sort of theory. We have seen it. Now come to some uh, practicing thing. We see it, how to implement in the ANSYS fluent and how to uh, solve your own problem. So before I moving uh, for the hands-on session, so I request if you have any questions or doubt, we can discuss this stage and we'll move further. Any uh, doubts? 
My voice is coming, Avilas, right? Hello. Yeah, just to just to yeah yeah, Mr. Sofen. Yes. Yeah, just to tell me. So basically, the mixture model you discussed. Normally, yes. we also have homogeneous model, right? Yes. 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 In, in two-phase flow, we have homogeneous model. So yes. how that homogeneous model different from your from your this uh, mix, mixture flow model? Yeah, homogeneous model in which conversation? Because because, because 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 basically in mixture flow model, what exactly you are doing? You are you are only calculating the drift velocity. Apart from that, if I if I exclude that drift velocity, it's just like homogeneous uh -huh. flow model only. Yes, yes, yes. It's a homogeneous model. The mixture mixture model. When you are a commercial software, you are making a commercial software. Mm -hmm. So you have to make it in a generic sense we, for a particular application. The drift velocity may be neglected because the relative velocity are uh, the, uh, the zero. But it's not all the cases. So in the homogeneous, uh, when you neglect those uh, drift velocity, the, that term divergence of the uh, uh, momentum that induced due to the drift velocity. So if you neglected that, it will be a homogeneous model. Yeah, say for example, basically say for say in a vertical tube, as you rightly mentioned, then suppose, suppose we have bubbly flow. Yes. So yeah, there's liquid and there is small, small vapor bubbles. So that yes. time, that time, suppose I want, I am interested only finding out the pressure drop and heat transfer. Yes. So, so in that case, actually, is it required to take the drip velocity? I don't think it is required. No, 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 it. no. You can neglect it for the capillary modeling. We neglect the drip velocity. So there is an option to neglect the drip velocity. So you just take the homogeneous flow. So just a second, if I, uh, I'm not sure. You have given the reference and where to neglect and how to neglect. Mm -hmm. This recent paper, we got it. Here we also neglected the drift velocity, uh, effect of drift velocity for this capillary tube modeling. You can neglect for the bubbly flow. Okay, 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 that's right. And uh, second thing is that actually, so it's a very challenging topic, Dr. Sofen. So basically, suppose I want to find out the pressure drop and heat transfer from inlet to outlet outlet of a tube if the two phase two phase flow is occurring so mm -hmm. there's some so so there's some transition limits like so there are, uh, based on the superficial velocities of liquid and vapor there are some mm -hmm. transition flow, means flow regimes are there yes yeah so basically yes. my idea is that say for example is, is the flow regimes are different say for example it is starting from bubbly to annular flow yes so in, in the annular flow basically v of model is a, means appropriate because there is clear interface yes, between, yes, the, yes, between the yes. liquid and vapor and there is, a, yes. there is also a um, yes. interfacial shear stress so those things cannot be neglected so we have to go for yes. v of model yes right yeah yes so, so for that thing can i do can we do something like first you first first we find out the superficial velocity map and then yes. this particular flow regime is putting is falling on, in that map we will go for that model and then similarly, yes. so there will so there will different regimes, and from inlet to outlet separately, we have to calculate the pressure drop and heat transfer in each and every regime. Then we can add it up. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, I have to answer your question. Yes, uh, you can do that if you have a priori knowledge that if uh, particular things are happening in a particular regime, you can do that. You can divide your geometry into several parts. If you know at a particular part, your bubbly flow is. Uh, happening and it's uh, quite uh, complex uh, to moni uh, monitor, uh, sorry, employ the VOP model in those region, then you can uh, neglect uh, uh, VOP model those region and uh, do the simulation taking the mixture model into computation uh, into consideration. Once you find out the property from the mixture model, then you use that one as a your input for the next region where you employed the VOP model. Yeah, exactly. Suppose you uh, but often those things are not known a priori. You don't know which region, which flow is happening. So always thumbs rule doesn't work. So ANSYS uh, commercial software like ANSYS Fluent, they provide the transition even if from VOP to DPM kind of region, but it's computational expensive. Okay, okay. No, basically, basically point is that say, for example, if I'm going for Fluent, either I have to go for a view of model or a mixture flow model or, or means earlier model. But actually, in reality, 
the flow the 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 type of flow is not same from inlet to outlet they are, yes they are yes different. exactly if you see the experiment just tell me which model to consider for here here if i consider the VOP model okay the VOP is okay you have a interface over here sharp interface over here i have a teller bubble i can calculate it a VOP model but what happened to this satellite bubble region can i can this VOP model will be give us with the accuracy it will give us with the accuracy if i have a very good uh, mesh adaptation scheme okay if i have a very fine mesh if to do that very fine mesh and mesh adaptation scheme i just need a very good supercomputer i just need a huge number of uh, core to process that one if not then i have to do some approximation this numerical method is nothing but do some approximation to approach the reality yeah, experimentally we are getting seeing a lot of things can we numerically predict those things? No, sometimes if you apply VOP model over here, you will miss somewhere the satellite bubbles that we already saw it over here. We applied the VOP model. We uh, replicate the Teller bubbles. Somewhere the satellite bubbles we are missing. Okay. Okay. Some so, small bubbles are capturing because uh, means we are that are not much important to us. Just I told you the bulk properties are of much important to us. And uh, uh, the thing, satellite bubbles are uh, comparative to the satellite bubble. And to capture that satellite bubble, we just need a very, very uh, uh, good uh, mesh refinement. Just uh, people like Professor Biswas, who is working on the droplet scale, they are using just like a, uh, their own in-house code or uh, uh, codes like Jerry or Basilisk to do a AMR, that is algebraic multigrid. Uh, uh, um, uh, <coughs> grid refinement scheme to the uh, capture those kind of phenomena but a very small scale just like a drop uh, uh, droplet uh, impeachment or the boiling of the single droplet you can do all those things but while you are solving for a slurry transport for in industrial scale it is very difficult so somehow you have to compromise what you need to capture and what is meaningful for you okay okay and the uh, thing that actually say basically whenever there is a annular flow there is an interfacial shear stress and how mm -hmm. do you calculate that basically normally people have some correlations like right for finding out the they they just find out the shear stress in one domain and they find out in the other domain and then equate because as the as the, as the interface is a sharp interface the shear stress cannot be different for two different phases yes, but actually yes. is there any possibility of calculating its interfacial shear stress Numerically, you are calculating it, right? The yeah, same yeah, potential. Yeah. Yeah. Numerically, Numerically, you are calculating, right? Our tangential velocity uh, component along the interface. So how do you do that? How do you do that? Like, like, do, do you do that? Like in interfacial stress, you are calculating in liquid zone, and then you have some value. Then you, yeah, then you find out interfacial yeah. stress in the vapor zone. Then you equate it. If it is not, then uh, you can go for other possibility. Like that. There is a pressure jump. It's not just like that. There is also radius of curvature. If I show the equation over here. Yeah, my screen is not visible, I guess. Oh, that that we are talking about Young's Laplace equation, right? Yes. Young's Laplace equation, no? Yes, 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 yes. Young's Laplace equation. Just sorry, earlier my screen was not visible, so I explained that uh, thing without showing the screen. <sighs> there is a pressure jump equation across yes. the interface also. Mm -hmm. So that also you need to account. Okay. Earlier I saw, uh, sorry, I just explained uh, by not showing anything. Yeah, I, so I understood that, sir. I understood. I understood. Whatever uh, this this was, I was talking about this phenomena. Yeah. Experimentally, I, I thought my screen was shared. Experimentally, if you see, hmm. this is the region where I can employ the VOP model and compute the SARP uh, interface between the Taylor bubble and the rest uh, liquid. But by doing that, what I am doing, I am neglecting, I am not able to capturing the tiny, tiny uh, satellite bubbles form in numerical. Although the experimental, I can see a lot of satellite bubbles. While I am doing the numerical, I can just simulate the uh, share, sorry, a teller bubble, then not much of the satellite bubbles. To capture that, I just need a very good grid refinement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, 
so if not any other question we will move to the training uh, or something on the fluent or we need a break no no not required no break is required you can start okay so let's uh, go to the fluent we will do the taylor bubble simulation i have already prepared the geometry for you okay so this is uh, a geometric created using ansi space claim okay you can create it i'll show you uh if you go to the new thing okay new design okay so this is my uh, space claim environment uh, geometric creation is here is much easy compared to the any other cat software if you know this is uh, very uh, similar okay go to the design sketching mode suppose i want to sketch in which plane you have to choose a plane suppose xy plane i need to work it's a 2d geometry so come over here okay x y plane so i just need to prepare a uh, 2d pipe flow kind of thing so just let's my 2 mm is my uh, uh, inlet diameter and oh sorry control z uh, it's two it's suppose i am 200 mm or 400 mm pipe i am doing the simulation so now my pipe geometry is created right so once this geometry is created then i have some uh, channel over here some some other uh, where the water is coming there is some other port where the air is coming that i also need to manufacture uh, sorry uh, design the so design go over here okay suppose the hmm is another 2 mm thing uh, sorry okay this is let's say 4 mm so this is so our air is coming our water is coming they are moving right you can prepare like this already i have prepared a geometry for you okay so i just divided into this whole geometry for the slot flow simulation in two part one is the mixing chamber where the the water is coming from here air is coming from here they mix in the chamber and they are moving upward so then there is a uh, conduit they are tight developed so once you do that so there is a option called uh, shear shearing topology so what this shearing topology does this shearing topology combine the geometry so that a conformal mesh will be formed if you don't do that there will be Uh, non-conformal mesh will be formed means the the mesh structure in the both side of this interface will be different if you do the shearing topology they will be same in the mesh so okay so just go and shear topology wherever there is a shearing interface in the geometry they will be shared and the mesh will be good so now let's go to the workbench let's see the meshing part because most of the people they Uh, go to directly solver and uh, exclude the geometric creation or the meshing that <laughs> generates most of the fear actually oh sorry why i create a new one i have already work bench mm -hmm, mm -hmm. mm. open Let's see. Yes, this is already I did it. That geometry already here. You go and import the geometry. Okay, once the geometry here, you go import the geometry is there already imported. You can also browse and replace if you like to replace. Already I did it import for you. Now let's go to the missing. See how I did it missing. Now it's some time. The meantime, close uh, this thing. Not required. So let's take some time for the point to open. Tap into missing.
Yeah. Here the mess uh, mess up. Okay, what I did it. So it's a 2D mess up. You can have a 3D geometry and all. The slot plot normally is a 3D property. So it's uh, computationally now expensive to do it in a laptop. So those things we did in a, a supercomputer or the cluster. So now once you import it, you can see all the names. This naming, etc. I did it in the space claim. Yeah. Uh, I did the naming here. You can go and uh, give the names, whatever the name you like. You can give, give it. This will be displayed, right? So the naming, etc. I have done it so that it is showing. This is my water inlet. BC stands for boundary condition. This is my air inlet. This is the outlet. I have a outflow from the boundary. So this is my outlet. Okay. And uh, there are some uh, W stands for wall. Okay, this is a wall of the main conduit. So now, what I did, insert meshing method. I already mesh is prepared for you. This is not a very optimized mesh, but it's a good mesh. But I'll show you the options. Okay, so mesh, you go insert method. Then once you insert the method, it will ask you what method. You just choose it multi and uh, multi zone method. So it will do multi zone method means you have zone one, zone two. If a number of zones that is connected with the shared topology, it will consider and makes a quad tri mesh. So for the tur as I told, it's in a turbulent region. So turbulence computation, what I need, I just need uh, the some boundary layer uh, computation. I just need some prism layer across this solid wall. So just here go give some inflation layer. They call it inflation layer in the workbench in the fluent method they commit as a prism layer hmm. you can go over inflation layer define the number of define the geometry in which you like to give the prism layer suppose this geometry this is the phase in which prism layer is up oh, sorry applied you can choose it provide the uh, 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 geometry or the phase in which you like prism layer then edge okay here you can uh, Control face here, you can choose the edge. Then, uh, wherever you like to grow the prism layer, you can choose those things, right? Then, face sizing, etc. What is the sizing function? You use it. So, it's a 2 mm geometry. So, we put the sizing around uh, 0.2 millimeter, right? So, similarly, this is 0.2 millimeter. I put it for the face sizing. So, once you do it, go for a missing. It will generate a very fine mesh for you. So let's clear the missing. Let's see it from the beginning. Clear the data. Okay. Now my mess is clear. Okay. Now generate the missing. Let's see how much time it is taking. So you can generate it. So not. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, mesh is generated. It's a very 2D mesh, not much time. So you can check the mesh quality, etc. over here. You go to the statistics. You can see, oh, not here. Go to the mesh statistics, etc. There is only 44,000 elements that are created. So if you need, you can further refine the mesh, course the mesh, localize, adjust the mesh, etc. Then uh, once it is done, your missing is done. You go over here, file, export, mesh, okay. Then fluent input file, export. You can export over your file in the MSH format that already I have did it uh, for um, this particular mesh. So once it is done, your mesh is now exported for use in the fluent. Now we come out of the missing uh, mode. So in meshing, 3D meshing, I have a tutorial. So it is available on YouTube. You can search in my name in the YouTube. We can learn about different kind of uh, 3D meshing in the for complex geometry bin if you will need it. So you can learn it from there. Yeah, it's much more interactive, the fluent measure compared to the workbench measure. But still, the workbench measure is applicable for particular kind of mesh, just like sweep mesh or 2D mesh kind of thing. The fluent measure only supports 3D meshing. So now let's come out of this, uh, close those things, geometric creation, missing, etc. is clear. 
now we will go to the setup so setup already let's go to fluent okay this is our fluent double precision or single precision based upon the thing there are two options in the fluent one is solution one is missing we are not doing missing in the fluent we are doing solution choose solution double precision okay we are going to 2d simulation not 3d simulation choose 2d okay choose number of parallel processor this machine i have 16 gb so uh, six processor is okay then working directory what is the working directory over here okay i have the working directory give the path to the working directory hmm. Start. Now my flint is open, right? So what you can do here, you can read the mess you have prepared. So the mess already I have prepared over a mess input that I can read over here. Okay. So if you want to show the mess, you can come here, it will show the mess display. The mess is displayed over here. Hmm. So what you do, you can also say, check the scale, okay? the dimension x minimum y minimum etc if you are using fluent measure you have created you have uh, choose it millimeter created but if you are using ansys measure then the diameter so the dimension is by default is converted into si unit no need to do any extra thing okay so this is the mesh is important now you have to go to the case setup already i did the case setup for you just i'm going to case and opening it okay okay uh slot flow Okay, now that the same case is open for you, let's see the mess. Okay, now in this geometry, okay, we have uh, water flow from here, we have air flow from here, and we are interested to measure a uh, sorry, model a slug flow or the Taylor bubble flow in this thing. Okay, I'm not coming this mess is optimized or anything or mess independent study, this is just a raw mess. So, as per your requirement, you can go prepare a good mess, go for mess refinement study. Then let's first come first all this multiphase model, bob, uh, mixture, oiler, they work on a pressure based solver. They don't work in the density based solver. Choose pressure based solver. Velocity formulation is absolute. This is a 2D thing. That's why it's a 2D planar flow. Time scale formulation, it's a, as I told, it's a transient in nature, just transient. And we have a gravity in the y direction, okay, negative y because we have a well, more y in the positive direction. Gravity is along negative y, that's a minus 9.81, okay. Then this is the uh, general setting. Then coming to the model, we have a multiphase model, right? So before moving to the model, let's go material. Okay, what are the material we are measuring? Yeah, uh, uh, Two phase flow over here. We have now basically two fluids. So just go to the fluid. Air will be by default will be there. Create one more new fluid. It's a water. If you have any other three phase flow, you can also create air, water, glycerin. You can create the thing. Then you come to the model. Okay. Activate the multi phase model. If you go to the multi phase model, they'll they will be asked you a lot of options. Okay. This is volume of fluid model, mixture model. Okay. This uh, then this is uh, Euler and model, inhomogeneous model. In the homogeneous model, as Sarah asked me already, we have in the homogeneous model, we have volume of fluid model or mixture model. You choose volume of fluid model. Then the explicit or implicit uh, formulation means the governing equation we saw over here, right? In the explicit manner or implicit manner, you want to solve it, okay? choose explicit or implicit because sometimes the interface this equation is utilized for interface tracking so explicit inclu implicit already you know right the uh, dependency upon the time of the previous uh, computation of the data from the previous time step or you are uh, in the current time step and calculating the previous like that you explicit implicit you already know it so i just put it implicit then the volume fraction cut up after which threshold they uh, cut up the volume fraction minus six is by default implicit body force. Then there is option called 
interface is called sharp or disperse what is the sharp and disperse interface so let's uh, come over here okay these are my computational uh, grids okay if my interface whatever the shape of the interface if it is coming and lying in a particular grid so this kind of interface i will call it sharp interface but if it is not doing that means here these grids either 0 1 here either 0 1 here either 0 1 here either 0 1 here either uh, uh, sorry here in, in any value between 0 1 okay rest thing either it is 0 or 1 but if the interface is diffuse one what will happen X in, in, instead of one cell you will find the uh, the fractional value value of 0 between 0 and 1 more than 2 or 3 cells suppose instead of here suppose it is 0.4 numerical dividing computation here it is 0 0.6 here it is 0 0.3 this kind of thing you call it disperse interface right so if you apply for the disperse interface you will get a thick interface where the interface is diffused in multi layer of the uh, uh, computational grid instead of a single layer so there is an option we call, we just capturing the sharp interface not disperse interface okay so then they are coming to the page tab okay first define the primary page so i define water as my primary page go to the page material choose water in the liquid page is my primary page come to the secondary we just just choose air as a page then my page material is air okay this is my secondary page then there is an option called phase interaction well this in this phase interaction as i told we have to provide the surface force in terms of the oh, sorry uh, line force surface tension as a, a line force in terms of the volumetric force that is done by some bracket okay so here what do we provide you provide the coefficient of the surface tension that's all so you have a continuum surface force you have a wall adhesion again what is wall adhesion and all so this wall adhesion we need because we have a contact angle suppose this is my surface uh, of the tube if my water droplet is coming how much contact angle this is making with the surface so this is suppose 30 degree 60 degree or something to capture that one i just need a wall adhesion if i neglect the wall adhesion that's not okay for this kind of uh, slot plus simulation you need some wall adhesion based upon the property of the fluid if your fluid is coming they are sitting over the surface like this or they are sitting over the surface like this they depends upon the uh, angle of the contact right so to activate that one just put it wall adhesion then uh, uh, select the continuum surface force that converts your line force information to a volumetric force and do the surface tension modeling if you feel your surface tension is not important you can neglect the surface uh, switch off the surface tension modeling if you have any heat and mass transfer uh, associated because of the change in phase that you can activate at present current uh, setup we don't have any heat or mass transfer associated so that's why with this uh, multiple simulation okay apply okay then energy we don't have any uh, energy equation because we don't have any um, associated mass transfer over here then activate the turbulence model and from the new version of ANSYS by default the turbulence model is k omega just I need k epsilon over here, k epsilon realizable, some scalable wall function you can give it, make sure your y plus value is coming proper during the computation. From the model, I don't have to uh, prepare any other things, okay. Then the next thing is that hmm, the cell zone condition, go to the cell zone condition. So now see, I have two things, one is the conduit geometry, one is the uh, mixture, okay. So if you see over here, they are both representing the mixture. They are not in a particular uh, phase one or phase two, they represent the mixture zone. Hmm. The vital information over here, the operating condition, okay. So there is a operating density method. Earlier we have to version of the fluid, we provide the density, density of the secondary phase or the minimum density we provide over here. Now automatically fluent has the option to minimum phase average. Thing. 
then we have to calculate the gravity gravity is minus y direction where is i'm uh, measuring the gravity i'm measuring gravity at the origin so that's why zero zero is there if you are measuring gravity some other position then you can give, uh, define the position over here okay and this is an operating pressure so once that is done the next target is to calculate the boundary condition right so already what kind of boundary condition here i have the inlet boundary for the uh, water inlet boundary for the air pressure uh, outlet boundary which i don't know that I'll, i'll put it pressure outlet okay so just over go to the boundary that boundary you have created in your geometry change uh, you can even change the type type here i have velocity inlet mass flow inlet you can change the type of the boundary there are some wall boundary so here i am going to the boundary <coughs> of the water inlet boundary condition okay i name it as the inlet uh, air inlet and water inlet so suppose i am going to the air inlet boundary condition hmm. so here you provide what is the mass flow rate of the air right so once you provide the mass flow rate okay you don't know whether it's air or the, it's a water so you just provide the mass flow rate hmm. air inlet boundary then there is a corresponding phases air phases and water phases primary phases will not allow you to provide any volume fraction rather than secondary phases will allow you go to the air phase <coughs> now in the air phase this is the air inlet boundary condition so the volume fraction need to be one only air is coming from this side so volume fraction may, needs to be one by default it is zero you make it one and apply this is the water phase similarly give the velocity just 0.15 i have taken so air phase let's see how, how much i have taken point air phase i have taken 0.2 okay for the slot flow simulation the water phase i have taken a velocity around 0.15 okay similarly to ensure only water is coming go to the here in the air phase make the air volume fraction zero right then this is setup done then we have to go to the method okay just i have choose the coupled algorithm if you go want you can go to piso algorithm or uh, nita scheme just like non iterative time advancement scheme etc just here i opt for the coupled algorithm gradient formulation for multi phase flow you can put it green gauss node based uh, uh, gradient formulation the Uh, discretization of the pressure equation you just put it pressure true uh, momentum you initially you can put it uh, first order and after few iteration you can make it second order of winding because of convergence kind of uh, uh, issue then uh, the volume fraction make it compressive the volume fraction discretization make it compressive and go to the ansys plate theory, theory guide to find out what is this compressive discretization and turbulent uh, formulation always put it faster or up in the new uh, version of the ansys okay and uh, time formulation you put it faster or implicit method for the time discretization hmm. and the control you can go you can uh, here define uh, some of the relaxation factor so the volume uh, fraction relaxation i make it around 0.1 so the momentum relaxation if you want you can make it 0.3 pressure relaxation you can make it something 0.25 the flow current number you can put it 50 60 kind of thing okay mm -hmm. and based upon the requirement you can do it okay now come to the report definition here you are measuring something so how to know a volume is a teller volume or not as i told whenever the teller bubble is formed so it almost captures 70 80% of the surface area of the tube diameter right so at a particular uh, surface you need to measure the volume fraction at a particular time then see if it is teller diameter or not if you are doing the data or signal processing because there is a continuous flow of the bubbles so at a particular surface you need to monitor the volume fraction that i over did over here okay at some uh, interface region okay i am measuring the uh, volume fraction of the air phases facet average of volume fraction of the air phase so this will give me when i am plot with the time series this will give me with what time how much number of teller volume of volume volumes are passing through the particular area right once you did it hmm. 
then go to initialization you can initialize the geometry right initialize it now i just need to visualize of the bubble how it is going on now so what i did i just need to go to the contour in this after initialization you can go to the contour you can plot it the volume track phase volume fraction air phase volume fraction you can plot it how it looks lately let's see now there is everywhere it's a water i have initialized everywhere the water there is no other volume fraction inlet air is coming that's why these zones are there so you can uh, allow the simulation okay every time step you can uh, set the figures every time step or after interval of few time step you can set these contours okay then you can prepare the animation to see what is going on so what is happening so there are some commands hmm, to uh, uh, auto save after suppose you are running the simulation you want to auto save the file after a uh, few time steps so i choose 500 after 500 time step the geometry will auto save and uh, maximum save file is 2 i do it over here there are some other options just like execute command that i executed to uh, draw this contour sorry uh, prepare this contour view this contour and save this into the local drive i will give you supply these three comments over there you can provide it okay let's uh, initialize it again and start running see how it is looking initialize now in the run calculation you can come hmm. provide the time step i just provide a time step 0 0.001 2000 iteration because slot flow simulation takes a long time let's see calculate I started calculating so now you can see my residue okay let's see after a few hundred iteration my contour map will be updated and it will show up locally let's see Now see the first control came. Now this is the first instance the air in uh, enter into the domain. Hmm. Let's see after a few hundred iteration, wait for two, two three minutes. We'll see how the tailor bubble looks in the slot flow. See how gradually the air is moving into the domain.
So gradually you can see the bubble is growing, it means uh, um, a far distance from the mixture chamber, we can see the Taylor bubble. If you allow it to run for a long time, we can see that hopefully I will uh, uh, share this file with Abhilas. He will share it with you. You can run in your own system and uh, see it because time don't permit us to stay here for a long <laughs> to see the simulation. So hopefully you will get an idea how to simulate this multi-phase flow in the uh, thing. Now you can see how the bubble is moving, how the transition is happening from the slot flow to churn flow. All these phenomena, you can uh, play with this uh, fluent and see it. In the meantime, we can take any questions. So these things are, uh, uh, these pictures are Sorry, locally saving. Saving locally, you can uh, take this picture and prepare animation. Any movie maker, you can use it for animation. Just saving. So you can prepare animation. Just like you see here, it's already formed first. Telebubble is formed already here. So you can save the picture, make the animation out of that. Save some beautiful pictures, animation. Yeah, we can go to any questions. Here we can see we already formed a bubble over here, tell a bubble over here, we already formed it. Hmm. Okay, I'm stopping the simulation here. So you can see the convergence, etc. If you run for a long time, you can see the slot flow in the domain. So yes. Okay, uh, any questions? Any questions, audience? Sir, so, so, is there any question? Someone is asking. Am I audible? Ah, yes, uh, yes, who is speaking? Uh, beige. Okay. Okay, sir. Actually, one uh, like uh, just condition I am providing. Suppose at the inlet, oxygen mm -hmm. means uh, mixture of air and nitrogen. Mm -hmm. We are uh, sorry, uh, carbon mm -hmm. dioxide. We are uh, giving. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, outlet, we have no idea whether uh, both are coming in the form of uh, gaseous state or one maybe get liquefied and uh, uh, means uh, states are different okay so in this situation so VOF that model will be best suitable one or should we go we go for any other models can you repeat the fluids yeah, can can you repeat the fluid fluid are oxygen I mean sorry uh, air and carbon dioxide mixture so the okay. ratio of carbon dioxide varies okay, okay? and uh -huh. uh, it is actually implemented in vortex tube and it is expected that the uh -huh. ratio of carbon dioxide what we are uh -huh. uh, means uh, initially suppose we are uh, uh, at the inlet we are uh, giving 50 percent of carbon dioxide and 50 percent of oxygen okay uh, mixture totally okay and at the outlet as in vortex tube you have two outlets okay one is cold where from which the cold gas uh, is uh, obtained and in other one where the hot gas is obtained and we just want to know as experimentally it is already found that the cold gas at the cold end this carbon dioxide with means uh, since we have this mixture okay oxygen means uh, air and carbon dioxide so the carbon dioxide that is obtained in uh, uh, I mean uh, uh, at the cold end it is having uh, uh, maximum uh, means it is uh, reach of carbon dioxide only. That means at the inlet actually when we okay, are going to run like the simulation, to... that time yeah, we are no, no. mixing. Yeah. But actual one is it is the uh, means uh, 
uh, we can say like um, any plant exhaust gas which naturally contains carbon dioxide and our purpose is to separate this carbon dioxide from air okay so when we are implementing this thing so in simulation obviously we have to uh, at the inlet we have to provide mixture of carbon dioxide and air and we are expecting only carbon dioxide will be available at the cold end as per it is already uh, means uh, uh, proved in uh, experimentally also but while doing the simulation how do we proceed this thing yeah first thing what i told all about this multiphase model your fluid need to be immiscible yeah there should not be mix just like exactly. kerosene and water kind of thing mm -hmm. What do you think? If you allow carbon dioxide in the air, it will be mix or it will mix. be. Uh, yeah, that is. Then how how will you uh, think? But the thing, no, no. The model. thing is that the mechanism, the if we go through the vortex tube, the it's if the it is a mix. physics. Uh -huh. Okay, so where the uh, separation takes place inside the vortex tube. That's, yeah, that's why it is very really confusing. Multiphase models, multiphase <coughs> models are not applicable, hmm. both for multi-species computation. There is another thing. Mm -hmm. If you have a multi-species kind of thing, mass transport oven, the mm -hmm. model there is called species transport is there. There is come species, yeah, species transport. transport that thing also um, you go to species applied. transport and provide species. So you provide the species transport. The same okay, that species uh, transport, that thing I am also applying. So mm -hmm. any other extra information can no, you... No extra information though, because your fluids are miscible, you need to species transport. Not multi phase. Yeah. If there is a distinguished phase, mm -hmm. air, water, it's fine. Mm -hmm. well, liquid, two different liquid that not miscible, carbon mm -hmm. dioxide and uh, uh, air, they're perfectly miscible. If you have yeah, a exactly. uh, mixture, then how the will they use multi phase flow? How the solver will know that but this the, is. At uh, the outlet, the thing is that at the outlet, these are two separate carbon dioxide. That's what I mean. So based upon the, if you, separated if you from the, uh, air. If you if you apply the multi-species model also, yeah. the species uh, the species uh, component you will get at the um, outlet is very different from the if what you provide in the inlet. If the physics is something like that, you just uh, use the multi-species model and track each species no, instead of the multi-phase. Uh, result part, the molar uh, concentration. If I am focusing, I am getting different results, and if I am going for uh, uh, this. Uh, mass uh, concentration means mass of uh, uh, air and uh, this mass of uh, carbon dioxide then i am getting uniform result means there is no separation at all yeah very difficult to answer the particular problem in a generic okay. sense i have to look it otherwise i very difficult to answer but definitely there is some uh, uh, way to do it okay okay then thank you but not uh, with the multi-phase model, rather the multi-species model you multi have to do it. Multi-species, yeah. I have also yes. applied the same thing. Multi-species I am carrying on. So I am not getting where I, exactly I am trapped in this problem because uh, at the result part, it's showing molar concentration are varying, but uh, this uh, mass concentration when I am going for it's uh, showing um, it's uniform result. At the inlet, whatever it was, same thing it is going on throughout the oh, I mean device. So I have to look at the problem. So it's very okay, difficult. If you, if you say then I can contact you personally to discuss particularly uh, on it. So you are working in kit, right? Yeah, faculty in kit. Okay, you can connect with Avilas. He has my connection. Okay. So yes, yes, sir. No. Okay. Any other question? Thank you. Thank you, Anil, for Thank your you. question. Any other questions? So, yeah, Dr. Sopan, what about the accuracy part? Like, uh, you are doing a lot of things in two-phase flow. But I, 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 I'm basically focused for boiling. In case of boiling, as I mentioned earlier, that different... Sorry, sir, are... your voice is not uh, clear to me. Can you repeat it? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, so basically what my question is that actually, say for example, if you are going for VOF model, mixture flow model, Eulerian model, and uh, you are you are particularly finding, you are 
targeting different flow regimes you are finding out pressure drop heat transfer everything by coolant what about the accuracy actually you you have any idea about say for example uh, experimentally because normally if you are talking about two phase flow i am fine if there is plus minus 20 percent error normally papers and everything um, expect that if there is plus minus 20 percent also, also it is good so like in fluent actually if you are doing all such type of modeling for particularly for boiling what will be the accuracy whether we can rely on this for that depends upon your input how uh, there are a lot of empirical correlation just like in a drip flux model mm. there is some correlation for drag we have assumed mm. so if you assume your particle to be spherical you find some different shape if you have a granular flow so what model you are assuming and what input you are giving that depends upon your accuracy that decides your accuracy it's not like that universal everything is uh, with the same uh, close to the experiment. Hey, basically, basically from, from your experience, can you tell me what could be the minimum accuracy? Yeah, in the industry, uh, uh, I'm telling from the industry experience. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. For some heat transfer simulation with 4%, 5% accuracy, we got a temperature, some uh, washing machine dryer. If we predicted numerically, it's around maximum temperature is gonna is getting 120 degrees centigrade. Maybe experimental we are getting 125 or 115. That is the temperature for plus minus five degree we got it within that accuracy. Or sometimes maximum time within two degree uh, we'll got the temperature thing. For the multi-phase simulation, the mass flow rate, I think uh, we got something within seven uh, percent, eight percent. We got it for the capillary tube. Uh, with that accuracy okay okay that's very good five seven seven percent means below ten percent is always good in case of multi yeah that, that needs a lot of uh, ex experience and a lot of uh, uh, means um, other things to do it's not just not like the start the print you just need very good approximation for geometric cleaning to extract the water type geometry you need very good approximation for missing you, you should there should not be any uh prism layer collapse and all you need to find out uh, where are the important area in your geometry that you need to simulation otherwise uh, the mesh count will be huge you are neglecting some important area you are co considering some area that is not so important lot of other uh, things you need criteria you need to follow to have a very good simulation it's okay. just based upon the experience okay okay Any other questions?